Jerry and, and Mills in, the, in their letter to the season ticket holders and, and their overall message all year was that, you know, they're not going to skip steps by any means. But if we, if let's say this best case scenario comes to fruition and let's say you land the, the, the third, the fourth, the fifth pick and you end up keeping it. Do you see, because I, I, I still don't see, once again, I still don't see the, the, the clocks aligning between bringing in a Kevin Durant and a Kyrie Irving, best case scenario, to pair with this young team because, yes, we'd, we'd be excited to have them. Yes, you know, obviously it, it, we, we'd increase our win totals. But where would that really lead to? You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Matt Macri, go, go ahead on that one. I, I, I think they, I, again, I don't know if this is wise. I think they believe they could have their cake and eat it too. Um, I, I think they believe that the young guys that they have on the roster took enough steps forward this year. Um, and also that anybody coming here um, would have just enough patience um, to um, allow the thing to play out as they see it potentially playing out. Um, the other, the other part of it, I just want to toss in here. And again, JB could speak to this probably better than I can. Just based on the money, if you look throughout the league and you're like, okay, you know what? Um, let's go a different direction. We have Durant, we have Kyrie or Kemba or Jimmy Butler, whoever. Um, we need to make some trades. We need to trade, let's say, a Kevin Knox or, um, you know, a Smith Jr. or um, or our draft pick or something for someone who could help us win now. Well, guess what? There aren't a whole lot of guys around the league who would be able to fit into that type of salary slot because all these kids are making no money. And if you look around the league at guys who, who the Knicks would theoretically want to target, you're talking about someone who's definitely going to be better than these kids are going to be next year. So obviously you're talking about your Bradley Beals of the world and, and, and guys of that, of that nature. That's not going to work money wise unless right. you trade literally a bunch, a bunch of people every, unless you trade everything. And yeah. even then it's like, it's not even financially feasible, JB, correct me if I'm wrong, unless you get the first pick. Yeah. So then it looks at, then you could start to look at like, all right, well, are there any guys making not a lot of money that I could exchange? Like, not a whole lot out there. Yeah. I mean, like, th does trading for like a DJ Augustine excite you? And like, would would the Magic even want to do that? Do you want to call up Atlanta and see if they want to um, trade you um, Torian Prince? Mm. Is, is he going to be that much better next year than Kevin Knox would be next year? It's like, Look, I trust me. I've looked at literally every roster, every salary cap in the league. There is not a trade out there that makes sense where it's like, all right, we send out a young player, take back someone that's not making a lot of money, but that is also someone that is definitely going to help us win next year. I I think they're just going to. That's one of the reasons I think they're just going to roll with, even if they they hit a home run this Hope summer. For the best. They're still going to go with these kids, yeah. 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 Mm. J JL, sounds like Macri's greasing the wheels for, for a mellow return on the cheat, man. <laughs> that, that, that's, what, that's what all that's that prognosticating right. sounded like to me, man. But that's you you right. be the judge, JL. You weigh in on this one, man. On, on, on a mellow just, return? Just overall, just, just overall um, you know, looking at this roster, if you do that best-case scenario and you have these two max players, you know, how do you pair that with these young guys? Is it asking a lot? from a Knox to take a huge leap in his sophomore year? Is it asking a lot for even a Mitch to take a, another huge step to really get this team to a point where they can actually, you know, make some noise or even just to make the playoffs and, and you know? Well, I have my tears. Like, my tier is the guys who have confidence in that can actually do something next season and probably contribute is probably, to me, uh, Mitch, Dotson, Trier. To, the, to me, those three guys – I'm fairly confident that they can contribute uh, to a winning team next season. Um, Knox, you just don't know. <laughs> you saw you saw sign towards the end of the year, but Knox is a is a wild card. So um, to answer your question, yeah, I, I, everybody and, and and those are the guys who most likely will be here next season anyway. So I mean, yeah, that's that's, that's my answer. Yeah. I don't know, just, just, you know, interest, just interesting to look at because I just feel like if you bring these guys in here, um, yes, we'll be excited, but the pressure is going to be immense. 
you know, the pressure's going to skyrocket. And so that's what I'm just, you know, the negative Nancy and me as a Knicks yeah. fan is just always looking at those downsides, you know? Yeah, I feel you. But best case scenario, Kyrie, Dotson, uh, Mitchell Robinson, Zion, KD, sorry, five, I think we'll manage. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah, you, you're asking for a Zion, man, but absolutely. Man. Yeah, best case you. scenario, I think we'll manage. The only thing I would say is, I would hope somebody between Zion and Mitch actually develops a jump shot next season because I don't know if you can have two players on the court at the same time. You can't shoot. Yeah. Um, Not spacing the floor, yep. Yeah, for, for, for sports, floor spacing purposes. Mm-hmm. Uh, if To me, that's all the way best case scenario. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, to me, too, it's what does – what are the conversations they have with someone like Durant and Kyrie, right? Like, we – we will see, you know, whenever Woj or whoever tweets it in July 3rd or something, like what Durant signed decides to do. But we don't know, like, does he say to the Knicks, like, look, I'm coming here, but, you know, kind of like a LeBron situation. This is what I want around me. And I think that's going to be the, we were talking about the fan base is for the most part on the same page right now with the organization. To me, the next big sort of debate might be, you know, if they actually get these guys, what we're talking about now, what do you do and how much are they um, committed to making a move? Cause they told someone like Durant, it would. Um, I think Maggie's right. Like, especially if Mitchell Robinson, I mean, he's making his, his contract is so good going forward. It's just really, you got to get a lot of value to me. I think if they're able to make the money work and new Orleans is willing to do it, I a hundred percent think the Knicks would trade for Anthony Davis. Mm. But outside of something like that, I don't, I think like, you know, it, it gets a little tricky, but it's just, like I said, how much does someone like Durant or Kyrie influence their thinking and say, moves. you know, sorry, I can't win with this guy. I want this guy. And they say, all right, well, we're giving you everything. We're giving Rich Kleiman a job. We're giving you the role players you want. Just yeah. come here. I don't know how much that might influence it, but I do think if they can get Anthony Davis, I think they will. I don't think they're going to say, no, we'd rather just develop all these young guys. I think they will, they wouldn't pass on putting those three together Anthony Davis, Durant, and Kyrie, if they can figure it out. So you would trade Zon for Anthony Davis and probably. See, I don't, I don't know if I, like, I have to think about it some more because it has been a big debate all season, right? But it's just right. like, um, it's it's just, not up to it's not even going to be up to them. It's going to be up to Durant. Yeah. If Durant says that's jump, clear. guess what? Yeah. How high? <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's, that, I guess that's what I'm getting at. Is I think that's going to be the biggest impact here. I think as fans, we can say you know the value of Mitch and how we like building these young players. I just think the the negative maybe of when you're living in this free agent world is you then have to make some promises and you then have to do things that you know, maybe you don't want to do, but I don't know. Like, look at these. We just saw these top seeds other than Milwaukee, you know, struggling early. Like, so are you telling me if you had Durant, Kyrie, and Anthony Davis and whoever you put around them, I mean, are they coming out of the East next year? Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I think so. That's <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's, that's how, a, yeah, man. How do you say no to that? Yeah. You, you really can't. You got to go hard or go home, man. Like they say, scare money don't make money, man. So. Ah, I love that quote. I, I, I guess uh, we, we would have to do it, man.